How's everybody doing? Are you ready to give today? Aren't you glad to give? You know, God is a giver. You're never as close to God as when you're giving. For God so loved the world, His love gets Him to give. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. Are you a giver? You have to be a giver. You won't grow with God if you don't give. If you don't start to be a giver. So you got to get rid of all the fear that if you don't hold on to what you have, you won't make it. No, no, no. There's so much more for you that what you have can't compare to what God wants to bring. So make sure you're a giver. Make sure that money doesn't rule your life. Make sure you can give it all the time in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you about faith the next four or five weeks. I believe it's important that we talk about faith. Why? Because the Bible says that you can't enter into the grace of God except through faith. Romans 5 says we enter into the grace of God. How many believe the grace of God is something important? Amen. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. And we enter into the love of the Father through faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, 1 John, I think it's 2.22 says if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. You have to put your faith in Jesus Christ or you can't get to the Father. Jesus said it. There's no way, other way to the Father. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So we have to know what faith is so we can put our faith in Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you in context of the dream, the dream in your heart, the dream that God gives you in your heart begins to shine a light on your path. It determines who's going with you and who's not going with you. It determines where you are in life and how to get to where God has for you. So I want to tell you about the dream. And believe me, he is the dream giver. So the name, the title of our, my message today is The Dream Giver. I believe some of you have been a, like a caterpillar in the previous season. But COVID has become your cocoon. And you're just getting ready to bust out to the great things that God gave you and put in you before you were ever born. He told Jeremiah, I saw you, I knew you, I gave you all your giftings and talents before you were ever in your mother's womb. Your parents birthed you, but I created you. And you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in my likeness and image, and I have great and mighty things for you. Amen. Amen. So I just believe you're getting ready to bust out. I believe in His Presence Church is getting ready to bust out. I'm telling you, last, last Wednesday we had more kids than we've ever had in our whole existence, I think. <laughs> Parents are bringing their kids. I believe in every born-again believer there's a compelling force to walk with God in a position of victory and significance. In every believer. I believe it's in you. I believe it looks, it's wanting to bust out. I believe it wants to go from here to out there. So that everybody can see what? The glory of our Father. So that it glorifies our Father. You would, you would sell yourself short that all your giftings and talents and everything God put in you was to glorify you. That would not, you would not be able to uh, 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 applaud that for long. You wouldn't be able to love it for long. You wouldn't be able to uh, feel good about that for long. It would wear off. But oh, when... You start living so that the Father is glorified. Glory to God. You raise, you go to a whole nother level when the Father is to be glorified by all the things He put in you. So I want to talk to you about this dream. You're born in the likeness and image of God. I mean, of course you're born for significance. You're born in the likeness and image of God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. He breathed his life-giving spirit into you and put his spirit of power upon you. I mean, you, you are not insignificant. We need to stop walking around like we're not gifted. We need to stop walking around like we're not special. You need to stop walking around like you're not supernatural. You are. You are, but it's for the glory of the Father he created us like that. We give him all the glory. But you can't be walking around like normal. You're not normal. 
You don't walk around in significance for your glory. You walk around in significance because he's living in you. And you just want him to have all the applause. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 2. We'll talk to you about the dream today. Online, I want to hear from you. Let's hear your comments. I miss you. We'll be back together soon. But until then... I want you to comment. Let me know what you're thinking, what you like, what you don't like. It's all good to me. Acts 2, look at verse 14. They've come out of the upper room. They're baptized with the Holy Ghost. And uh, he's he's met them and breathed the Holy Spirit into them. And it's kind of like when he breathed life into Adam in the Garden of Eden when he created man. And also the Holy Ghost has come upon them with power. And the first thing that happens is that everybody thinks it's weird. It's, it's crazy. They've never seen anything like it. And P- <clears throat> Peter starts preaching a message. I want to show you something significant. Verse 14, Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what the spoken by the prophet Joel. And he begins to prophesy what Joel said. And uh, thank you. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, and now, there's no indication that Peter understands or knows who Joel is. He might be thinking it's Joel Osteen or I don't know. But he's never spoke about Joel in his life. He'd never prophesied the Old Testament. He's just been a rascal and a scoundrel that's been changed because he's been walking with Jesus for all this time. But he begins to prophesy. Look at verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Man, I'm still seeing visions, so I'm still in the young man category. Praise God for that. Amen. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Now, I thought it was interesting. Of course, when he says men servants and maid servants, he ta- he's talking about regular folk like you and I. He's not talking about the CEO, the Bezos, and the Bill Gates of the world, and the you know, all the sports uh, elites and the uh, politicians and all the billionaires, whatever. He said, just on regular folk, my men servants and my maid servants, I'm going to pour my spirit out on them. And look at, what, look at what he says. You will prophesy, you'll see visions and dreams. This is the first message after being filled with the Holy Ghost that he, he could have preached anything. He could have preached the book of Revelation. He could have preached, you know, God's going to come back and you'll be saved from the tribulation, whatever. But he chose to preach because of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, on Peter and in him. God begins to speak about visions and dreams. Why? Because it's the dream and the vision of God that begins to take your life and transform you and becomes a light to the path that God wants you to take. Are you listening? You must must know the dream in your heart. It comes by the Holy Spirit. If you're filled by the Spirit, then there is a significance in you that God wants to bring out of you. How many have a dream in their heart today? There's some place that you're thinking, this is too big to tell anybody. They wouldn't believe me. That It doesn't seem to fit me, but this is what God's given me, and there's a passion in me to accomplish it. Anybody? Can you just give the Lord a shout? Yeah, that's me, God. Yeah, the dream. Remember when Jesus breathed on them? You have to inhale what God exhales. You have to learn to breathe. you got to breathe the breath of God in your life. Everybody just take a deep breath. Now exhale. So you're going to breathe in what God has, and then you're going to exhale for the glory of the Father. Everybody's going to see that God's living in you and how awesome 
your God is. Are you a believer? It's time to breathe. Come on, you can't walk around like you're not awesome. You are awesome. Come on, it's time to exhale the greatness of God that's in you. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Glory to God. Come on, we ought to just praise. Let's take five seconds. Anybody got a praise for God? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Come on. He is so great. We're children of God. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're made in His likeness and image. Amen. Glory to God. Remember, He's chosen us. He's filled us. No matter, no matter what the economy is like in the jungle, No matter how many animals can't be found for the lion to eat, it's a dry season. Everything's died. All the animals, it's a famine. Everything's, everything's dying out, and the lion can't find anything to eat. You will never catch him eating grass. Never. Not because he's prideful, because it's not his nature. He would never think to eat grass. It is not your nature now to be normal and try to fit in with everything, but to see what God wants to do through you and to follow this powerful dream that he's placed in your heart. Amen. Amen. You have to know that dream. You have to know what it is. You didn't used to be, but now you're more than a conqueror. You didn't used to be, but now you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. Anybody with me? You didn't used to be, but you're now you're a chosen generation, his own special people. Hello. You didn't used to be, but now you're a son and a daughter of the Most High God. You know, God is not just a God that gives you victory when the COVID is over. He's a God that gives you victory in the middle of it. In the middle of it. Let me pause and ask a question. Is there anyone that can testify that God has blessed you in the midst of this right here? Come on, look around. Look around. Do we have an awesome God? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Right in the middle of it. Right in the midst of it. If you would have told me that I'd have to survive a global pandemic in in my work and career would be disrupted. I'd be stuck in quarantine in my home, walk around outside with a mask on, be separated from my church, which is my lifeline for six months, and still be sane in my membrane. I don't know. I would have never been able to do that. But God held me. God strengthened me. Why? We're connected. The Lord and I are anybody connected to the Lord then you're connected to victory. There's a dream in your life. There's vision in your life that is victoriously taking you towards the significance that God wants you to walk in. Are you listening? You can't let the devil steal your dream. I feel like praising God. I mean, <sighs> woo! I, listen, I feel like standing up against the devil and every hater that's in this life and saying, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. I know too much now. I know too much now. Anybody know too much now? Come on, you ought to tell the devil, get your hell out of my life. God's got a hold of me now. God's got a hold of me now. Oh. Come on, somebody. Visions and dreams are the way in which the spirit world breaks in. Peter preached his first message. He could have preached anything, but he decided to tell us that God's pouring out his spirit and that we'll have visions and dreams. God will lead us by his spirit with vision and dreams. It's seeing the invisible so that you can do the impossible. It's seeing as God sees. Now, that is crazy to some people today in this place. 
What do you mean seeing as God sees? He is living in you. You're not supposed to perceive something outside of the truth of God who's living in you. You're supposed to have perception that says it's a supernatural existence. It's a victorious existence. It's one where I'm happy, that I'm not complaining, that I'm not moaning, that I'm not worried. I'm not anxious about anything. Oh, come on, that I'm going to be victorious. It might not look good this second, but I'll get up out of this in a second when God moves and turns a corner, and you'll see me victorious, and what I put my hands to, it's going to be blessed. Are you here today? Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Would you go with me to Genesis chapter 1? Genesis 1. I love it that God tells us right in the beginning exactly how things are going to go. Are you made in His likeness and image? Are you? Tell me when you're there. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. This is, a wor- this is worse than a pandemic. At least now there's something that can be destroyed. Then there's nothing. There's nothing that can stop. Nothing. It's just chaos. It's just darkness. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This is the same Spirit that lives in you now that was, you inhaled and now is upon your life. He's the same one that was there with God when it was completely dark and needed light and needed something, but yet he's hovering. He's not moving. Tell the person next to you, he, he ain't moving. So here's God. In the darkness, in the nothingness, God sees you and me. He sees the United States of America. He sees all the countries of the world. He sees all the mountains and the oceans. He can see it. It's in him. In the midst of a darkness, what he sees is about to come to life. Are you listening? That's that's in you. That's the dream that he has in you. And if you will believe and put your faith in Jesus Christ, that this same spirit is now living in you, you can start moving towards that dream. You can begin to declare and prophesy over your life. This is what I see. This is what God has shown me. What you see right now, no, no, no. It's not really anything compared to what the Father has put in me. I've got a dream in my heart, and God is moving in that dream. Listen. So that's without form and void. There's nothing. Holy Spirit's hovering. Just hovering over the darkness and the deep. Father sees everything. The moon, the stars, the sky, the universe, everything. Beginning and the end, everything. It's in him. He sees it. And the Holy Spirit will not move until someone says it. Not just anyone. But the word of God, Jesus speaks up, let there be light. He's just been hovering. The Holy Spirit's just been hovering. But once the voice of Jesus speaks up, bam, the Holy Spirit empowers that and brings light. And that light is still going. He's never recalled it. When he said, let there be light, that's why they'll never get to the end of the universe. It's still going at 186,000 miles per second every moment of every day. It's so powerful. And here the Holy Spirit's hovering over our life. But you must find that dream in your heart and begin to declare it. That's faithing. God, you mean you just tell me God has faith? It's not that he has faith. He is faith. This is how God is. This is how he lives and operates. He sees it. He says it. He secures it. Are you listening? He has it in him. The word of God speaks up, and the Holy Spirit seizes the moment and secures it right there. That's what you have. You have to live that way. Hebrews says it's the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the 
substance of things hoped for. That means I can see it. That I have a hope and a faith that this is what God wants me to do and how to live. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Your dream will compel you to action. You, it's the fuel and energy that gets you to act for a whole lifetime. It's what empowers you to act for a whole lifetime. It determines who will go with you and who will not go with you. It will determine what you're willing to give up to go up. All of a sudden, things won't be so important in your life anymore. I don't need that anymore. I got this dream is telling me that's a burden to me. I need to move in this direction. I need to get around some dream chasers. I need to get around some dream catchers. I need to get around some people who talk right. That will say, let there be light in their life. I need to get around some people that have agreement that God is supernatural, that I won't fit into the norm. I'm not supposed to. They won't look at me sideways because I'm different than the norm. They'll look at me as a child of God, fearfully, wonderfully made in the name of Jesus. You, ha you, have, look, you have to have that. You have to have that. You need to go to a church that believes that. Vision is to see. It's a picture of the future that produces passion. It's the fuel and energy that creates action in your life. It's more real than reality. Vision is seeing what God sees. Tell the person next to you, you need to see what God sees. Just write this down, Proverbs 29, 18. It says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Where there's no revelation, that means people who don't have vision that don't have a dream. Because you are a child of God and He lives in you, you are meant for significance. You know that in your spirit. I, th there's more to me than meets the eye. How do I get it from out here to out there? Man, I'm going to tell you, I feel like I'm going to explode. Moses got his call when he's 80 years old. Can you imagine waiting until 80? Man, I'm 66. I'm in my prime glory to God. I'm about ready to blow up. I'm, whoo, Glory. You, 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 you have to have visions and dreams in your life because if you don't, the pull to be significant because the Holy Spirit lives in you is so great that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a chance that you might leave your lane and get over into somebody else's lane because you're seeing them be significant. Plenty of people do that. They can sing, and so they try to be a singer and be a rock star and have a career it wasn't meant for them. They saw somebody else was getting applause and making great scratch. And they said, man, nothing's happening for me right now. I'm going to do that. Listen, there's some lousy singers that are making a lot of money right now. So it doesn't mean you can't follow your gifting and talents. You have to follow the dream that God's put in your life. <laughs> Hello, are you here? Because not giftings and talents is a good sign that that will play a part in your life where you're going. But you don't follow giftings and talents. You follow the Holy Spirit. Yes. Are you here? Yes. Amen. You can't afford to jump in somebody else's lane. You can only be number two. You'll never be number one in someone else's lane. So you have to love the Word of God. You have to love praying in the Spirit. Remember, the Bible says the entrance of His Word brings light. Light. You can see. You'll have vision. The entrance of his word brings light. It is a light to your path, which way you're going, and it's a lamp unto your feet. You'll know every step you should take. It'll lead and guide you every step. That's why you have to have visions and dreams. You have to have a dream in your heart. Amen. And you have to be patient. Like I said, Moses didn't get his purpose and destiny until he was 80 years old. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you. That's a, that's a downer right there, really, if you think about it. <laughs> I'm not saying that's going to happen to you. But you just have to know that it's in there. And when, when something is real but yet unseen, it's called fading. I'm fading. I'm doing what God did. It's in me. I see the, what's going to happen, and I just start declaring it. You have to speak about it. 
You have to speak your dream. You have to speak that purpose of God in your life. You have to put faith in the Word of God that greater is He who's in me than he who's in the world. Are you listening? Oh, no, yeah, look, God's going to turn things around for my good. He's going to take everything the devil plotted and planned against me, and he's going to take it and turn it around for me in the name of Jesus. If he's for me and he's given me a dream and the Holy Spirit lives in me, who could possibly stand against me successfully? It's no such thing. It's no such thing. You have to, you have to be faithing. Everybody say faithing. That means when something's true, yet not seen naturally, faith is in play and will have its way when you say. Can I say that again? That's tweetable, but faith is God's way of doing things. When something is true, yet not seen in the natural, faith is in play and will have its way when you begin to say, this is the dream that God's put in my heart. I'm going to be doing this with my life. You can't rub two nickels together. In, right in here, I can. In fact, it's a done deal in here. I'm completely victorious right here. Uh, how, just put your hand on your belly right now. Just say, this is my dream. God gave this to me. This is a real thing. It's happening right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm going to change my words. I'm going to change my actions. I'm going to start looking at things differently. I'm going to start running with a different crowd. Oh, I need some dream catchers in my life. In Jesus' name, give the Lord a praise. Come on. I mean, you might say, I've got nothing going on right now, Pastor. Ain't nothing happening in my life. Well, that's okay. That's a good time to swing for the fences. If you don't have anything, you can't hurt yourself falling off the bottom. No, 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 no. You, you, you should swing for the fences right now. You're not going to lose anything. You might as well be bold and risky right now and say, no, I've got a dream. God's put it in my heart. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how they look at me. I'm going to be bold and fierce like a lion of the tribe of Judah. I'm going to praise God every day. I'm going to have words that bless him. Come on. It's the dream. Thomas Edison started as a newsboy. John D. Rockefeller worked for six bucks a week. Beethoven was deaf. Julius Caesar was an epileptic. Charles Dickens was lame. Homer was blind. Jesus has a family tree full of murderers and adulterers and harlots. I mean, you can't believe how you can come out of nothing and he can turn it around for your life. William Booth, 100 Oh, I don't know, 1866, 67, in London. He and his wife Catherine lived there. And uh, she was a very sought-after Bible teacher. And so she would go around London and teach Bible. And he really didn't have anything going on. And he, they were married 10 years, and finally he said, God, you know, I'm so happy for her, but what about me? I mean, I want to be significant too. I want, I want to do something that makes a difference. And so they were, they were, they were at the east, east end of London. It was where the slums were. And she was teaching in a church there, a Bible study. And he said, baby, I, I, uh, I know you're going to do a great job, but I need to just walk around. I need to talk with God. She said, that's fine. So he's walking around, and he's seeing that every other building is a pub. And these pubs have these little stairs, four or five stairs, where the young kids who are homeless and orphans, orphans can climb up and order gin and get gin and drink it. The bartenders would slip them liquor. And that's going to be their life forever and ever. They're just going to grow up on the streets, alcoholics, living in the filth and the mud. And he's walking around. And he's looking at this. He said, after about 30 or 40 minutes of this, God spoke to me and said, what kind of a calling could you have greater than saving these people from hell. They have nothing. Would you do this for me? I want. He said God placed a dream in his heart and he went back to his wife and said, I found out my destiny. It, he didn't fast and pray 40 days. No, no, no. He just wanted that dream. He wanted God to give him his destiny. 
to glorify the Father, to be used of God in a great way. And so they, he and his wife, Catherine, started something called the Mission Center in the slum part of London, in East London, and it turned into the Salvation Army. They started the Salvation Army, which has three, more than three million members, probably a lot bigger church than anybody else has got, and it's in 91 countries. And God was faithful and gave him something. Come on, somebody ought to give a shout. Say, that's what I want, Lord. That's what I'm looking for. I want to change the world for God. Oh, amen. Each person can get a dream that will light a fire of passion that can't be extinguished. It'll, you can't shake it. You can't get rid of it. When you have a dream that God gives you, you just can't, all, you can fight all you want, but you know this is God, and you can't shake it, and you just need to get involved and get going with it. In the name of Jesus. Anybody like flies? I hate flies. You know, I feed my dogs every night, and I have to take their food so far away from that back door because I have, like, Beverly Hills dogs. They're so proper and prim, and they t eat a little bit, and then they'll come back later and eat a little bit more, and then they'll come back later, eat a little bit more. And because they leave the food there, flies gather. And if I don't take it away from our back door, every time we open the door, flies will fly in. And they are the nastiest things. I, I just wonder, God, couldn't you have kept them off the ark? I mean, how, how hard would it have been just to forget these things? Not many people are fond of them, but according to British scientists, the fly is the most talented aerodynamicist on the planet. Superior to any bird, any bat, or any bee. A house fly can make six turns in a second. It can hover, fly straight up, fly straight down. Fly backwards, do somersaults, land on the ceiling. Perform various other show-off maneuvers, and it has a brain smaller than a sesame seed. The scientists also know that flies are loaded with sensors, in addition to their compound eyes, which permit panoramic imagery and are excellent at detecting motion. They have wind-sensitive hairs and antennae. They also have three light sensors called ocelli on the tops of their head, which tell them which way is up. Roughly two-thirds of a fly's entire nervous system is devoted to processing visual image. Can you imagine that God spent that much time on a fly? If he spent that much wisdom and effort on a fly, what about you who are fearfully and wonderfully made? Come on, don't, let's not dumb it down. We're made in this likeness and image. Come on, there's got to be a place in you that's saying, God, i got to break out of normal. I need to do something significant for you, God. Here I am. Here's my life. Come on, you got to step up to the plate. If he can do that to a fly, just think what he can do in our life. When's the last time you declared over oppression, over lack, over money pressure, over all of Satan's lies? When's the last time you said, fool, I'm made in the likeness and image of God? You best not come around here. I am ready for bear. I'm loaded for you, pal. You best not come around here because I got firepower you don't even know about. Glory to God. Come on, you got to stand up and say who you are. I'm really done. I got so much more, I just can't. But I, I want to skip just for a moment because I want to tell you the number one dream stealer. When God puts a dream in your heart, you have to guard your heart, for out of it flow 
the issues of life. Out of the flow, out of this place in your heart, God tells you this is what your life looks like. If you are stopped by a policeman, you've been going too fast, he issues you a ticket because of what you've done. God issues life to you because you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. And out of this heart where this dream is, he starts issuing you, telling you, this is what you'll do. This is where you're going. This is what's yours. But I want to tell you how the devil can come in and steal that. You know, passion for the dream, it strengthens me to lose my lower life, to dominate my lower life. Why? The dream is given by the Holy Spirit. There's other sins in life, but because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, you can sin, but the sin of sexual immorality, perversion, is you sin against the body because the Holy Spirit lives in you. That's why his name is Holy, right? So the one who gives you the dream, who allows you to understand the deep things of the Father. See, no one can know me like my wife knows me. You understand what I'm saying? No one can know her like I know her. We have a relationship where everybody can have dinner with her. They can go out and vacation. with. They can do whatever they want. But there's something they're not going to do that I know her. That word to know, when it says they knew God, that same word know is the same word that they use for perversion or sexual immorality. It's that they begin to know each other in a way that no one can know them. And they, get to, they become one with them. You can't afford to become one with somebody who's not living for God. Do you understand? You become one with them. When there's sexual immorality, when there's fornication, when there's adultery, when there's any kind of sexual acts that's against the Holy Spirit, the Bible says you become one with that person. If you have enough of those encounters, every time you leave that person, there's a tear. There's a tear. You tear away from them. After a certain amount of times, so much of you has been torn up you can't tell what's right or wrong anymore. You can't be led by the Holy Spirit. There's not enough of you to go around when the right person comes. So this dream, I have to guard this and make sure that I don't let in dream stealers. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. Are you the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. You're not your own. You're bought and paid for at a price. You can't afford to take your body back in your hands thinking it's going to be better in your hands than it is in God's hands. That means I, I had somebody in my office one day well, this is just so difficult because everything I see I, on the internet and, 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 and then there my phone, I said, is the Holy Spirit living in you? Yes. Does that mean anything to you? Yes. Throw your, your, your thing right out in the street. What? Yeah, throw your computer out in the street, in the middle of the street so anything can hit it and crush it. I can't do Throw your Throw your phone in the ocean. What? I got my whole life on. Yeah, but the life you got isn't worth living. You're not living for God. You're, you're sinning against God, and you want, you're valuing this thing that you're stuck on. Come on, we not only have the pandemic, we have the porn-demic. And, and if you're stuck on that, you have to get out of that because it's going to kill your dream. It's a dream stealer. Say a dream stealer. Did you find Proverbs? Okay, I'm on my way. 
Let's look at Proverbs 6. Anything you're letting in your eye gate and your ear gate is going to get right down into your, it's going to go from your mind right down into your heart. Once it goes into your heart, it's going to steal your dream if you keep it up. You have to guard your heart. Out of it flows the issue of life. That guard your heart means to put a legion of soldiers, of 16,000 soldiers, Roman soldiers, around your heart and don't let that stuff in. That's the choices you make. Choices have voices. You've got to listen to the right voice, right? Proverbs 6. Look at verse 9. No, no. Hey, hey. Uh, let's look at verse 20 right now. My son, keep your father's command. Don't forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. You've got to keep the word of God. You've got to have it all the time. You've got to have friends that love the Word of God. When's the last time you and one of your friends sat down at the table while y'all were eating and you talked about holiness? Huh? Yeah, I knew I wouldn't get anything. Oh, and holiness amazing. Wow. You know, I, I had situations in my life and God just strengthened me by the Holy Spirit that I didn't get it. Yeah, me too. I, you ain't talked about holiness with nobody. You're not guarding your heart. You're talking about so-and-so. He's so fine. He's so cute. Have you seen him? Oh, my gosh. And preach? Oh, that guy's got anointing. He's got an anointment on him. Woo, man. Uh-uh-uh. She's amazing. Oh, I know. I have to just look. Oh, my gosh. You talk about that kind of stuff, but you ain't talking about holiness. And here you have a dream that's going to determine how far you go in life. Are you listening? Are you with me? Verse 22, when you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. When you wake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp and a law of light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Reproofs, getting corrected by the word of God. Stopping you in your tracks and saying, are you crazy? Didn't I tell you? Have you ever heard, didn't I tell you? I heard that about a million times in my life. Didn't I tell you, Mel? Glory to God. Didn't I tell you not to go that way? Didn't I tell you not to look twice? I said once is okay because you can't help it. But if you look twice, it's going to get in your mind. You need to combat that thing. Let's go on. I know that's a bad, bad deal. I just felt all the air go right out of the room there. Verse 24. To keep you from the evil woman or man, equal opportunity employer here. From the flattering tongue of a seducer. Do not lust after them in your heart, nor let, nor let them allure you with their eyelids. <laughs> For by means of a harlot, a whorish person, a man is reduced to a crust of bread. Look at me. A hero is not reduced by his enemies. A great leader is not cut down by his enemies. They're cut down by sexual immorality. They're reduced to a crust of bread. Anybody that gets knocked down can get back up. Are you listening? But this transforms a person from a, a strong person to a crust of bread. You can't afford that. Knock me down and get back up. If I can't beat you, I'll, go, I'll get three or four people that can. Hire them. Glory to God. But a crust of bread, it'll transform you. You'll never hear the Holy Spirit. You'll just never think you're worth it anymore. It's a dream stealer. You got to guard your life. You got to get people around it that understand the seriousness of this. Joseph had a dream. The passion for God's dream. is so important. He had more passion for God's dream than Potiphar's wife. The big dog that Satan sends, if he can't get you under pressure, if he can't get you to, uh, to worry, if he can't get you to be anxious, if he can't get you to just quit, 
then he sends the big dog, which is sexual immorality. He'll send it to your life. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me right now. Everybody, just, just give it a moment. Just give it a moment. Come on. Get some freedom in your life right now. I believe the prison doors are open. Chains are being broken. Just say no to that stuff. Nothing that lasts for minutes is worth your drink. Nothing that lasts for minutes is worth your drink. But the devil tries to get you to think that. That's why he says, don't listen to the seducer. Don't look again. Quit looking two or three times. Quit shopping, window shopping. Change the atmosphere of your life and how you live and the things you do. Get in places where that's not allowed. Make sure you surround yourself with places where some of the things that you might be doing right now, it would be looked down upon. People say, why are you doing that? Why are you living that way? Now, you need a great holy church. You need, you need the, the Word of God every day, the light of God's Word in your life. It'll strengthen you. The Bible says it'll strengthen you. Get around some people that you can talk real about and real to. If you're having problems and difficulties, get you somebody that can, you can be accountable with. That they'll look at you when you come to church, they'll look you in the eye and say, are you right with God? And they'll know if you blink. No, you need to have, be accountable. Put yourself in a position where I got to quit what I'm doing. Father, I just ask that you'd strengthen us. You'd help us. We need your help, God. This whole porn thing, God, I just break its power over the church in Jesus' name. Every man, every woman, every child. Father, I break its power, every bit of seduction, every lie of the devil, every bit of perversion, every bit of bondage. I break your power over the people of God in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you would empower us to be free, God, that we could be a pleasing vessel unto you. We could be the temple of the Holy Spirit. We could give you glory and honor in our life, the Lord, after good as you've been to us. And so I thank you, Lord, for that strength today. If you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, I, I need, I, I, I'm a believer. I've been going to another church or wherever you've been. You're saying, I've never heard anything talk like this before. This is like you guys really know him. You have a personal relationship with him, but I don't know that I do. I, I mean, I go to church and open my Bible, and I believe what you believe, but I can tell right now I'm not that close with him. I might have religion and not a real relationship, and I want that. Now, that's you here today, and you want a real relationship with God. You want to know that if you took your last breath here today, that you'd be going to heaven. If you're not sure of that, you need to be positive today before you leave this place. I don't know what's going to go on out there, but it's a jungle out there. There's a lot of cray-cray going on. I can't promise you that it won't come your way. What I am saying is that you could settle it with the Lord right now to know that no matter when your time is up on this earth, you could live out, all, you could live out another 50, 60 years. I don't... It doesn't matter. But when your time is up, that you be going with Jesus forever and ever. You could settle it right now. I'll lead you in a prayer of faith. If that's you here today, I'm going to count to three. You slip your hand up in the air and say, yeah, I need, Pastor, if you're going to pray, I need that prayer. Would you pray for me? I'll just recognize your hand. You can put it right back down. If you're not positive, if you're not sure, be sure today. I'm going to count to three. Just slip it right up. I'll I'll recognize you. Put it right back down. One, two, three. Just slip it straight. I see that hand in the back. Thank you so much. I see that hand over there. The, yes, I see those two. Yes. Who else? Who else? Come on. You want, I see your hand. Thank you so much. Who else would like to raise? I see yours, sir. Thank you very much. Come on. Three or four or five people are saying yes to Jesus today. Anybody else? You're saying, I need to put my hand up. I should have my hand up. I don't know. I'm not positive. Over here. Thank you. Over there. Yes. Thank you so much. I need to be positive. I see your hand, little girl. I see your hand. Thank you so much. Come on, there's six or seven people who are saying yes to Jesus. Is God moving in your heart? Is he pulling you up out of your seat? Just say yes to the Lord today. I'm going to pray with you in just a second. Thank you. 
everybody, just the people that had their hands up. Every eye is closed, every head is bowed. Just the people who had your hands up. I want you to slip your hand right up in the air again. I just want to see who you are. Just put it up and catch your eyes with mine. Just catch your eyes with mine with your hand up. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing you. If you raise your hand, make sure you raise it again. Would you just keep your hand up? I want to pray with you. We need to be together and pray. I want you to meet me here, right here, and let me pray with you right now. Come on, just stand straight up and come and pray. You won't be the only one. Just come. You will not be the only one. Come on, just grab them and tell them to come. Ushers, help me out, ushers. Come. Sir, come on, let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Come on, church. They need your encouragement. Come on, just stand right here. Every dot, every square is six feet. Come on, I'll wait for you. Come on, church, we need a little bit more enthusiasm. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We had five or six people in the 9 o'clock service give their hearts to Jesus today. God's doing something that in His presence. Church, I'm telling you, something is breaking out and going on. I just thank the Lord for it. I'll wait. Anybody else? I'll wait for you. Are you coming? Come on, I'll wait for you. Come on, church, they're still coming. Come, come. Help them out, Doug. Help them out. Susan, yeah, God bless you. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, man, I want the whole world to see that people are coming to Christ today. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, let's just... Let's just wait a second. God's really doing something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you thinking I should go up there? I'm about to pray. If I pray, will you have missed your moment? Could, could you do me a favor and just talk to the person gently, not obnoxiously, but gently, and let them know the ones beside you. I'll go up with you. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? I'll go with you. I'll stand up there with you. Yeah. Come on. Here we go. Desiree, I want to get a picture of all this. Okay. In Jesus' name. Anybody else, you, you're thinking, wait, Pastor, I'm on my way. I just need one more second to gear up here. In the name of Jesus. Look what God's doing. Look what God's doing. I'm going to pray right now. I'd like to tell you that I just spent a few minutes sharing the gospel today. That's what I do. I'm anointed to do that. But you're anointed to go into your world and tell them about the love of Jesus too. And if you will, people will respond. People will respond and say, yes, you just have to give them the love of the Lord. I want to pray. Will you pray with me? I want you to pray out loud. I want you to hear yourself say this. It's a prayer of faith. You don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. God's just saying, is your heart in this? Do you really mean it? Do you really want me in your life? Because if you really want me in your life, it's what I want. I'll come right today. The Holy Spirit's going to fill you, and He's never going to leave you and never forsake you. No matter what you've done, God has already paid for that through the blood of His Son. So that's paid for. So we're going to start something fresh and new today. Everybody pray this. Say, Father. Thank you for not giving up on me. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. I need that. I know it. My faith is in you, Jesus, that you died for me. You paid for all my sins. You're alive today. And now I'm making you the Lord of my life. Through faith in you, I believe I'm forgiven. I'm born again. Lord, I want to live for you. I can't do it on my own. I'm not strong enough. Would you fill me with your spirit? I want all of the spirit of God in all of me. Oh, I want to live for you. I leave that sinful life behind, and I'm believing that you're going to help me live for you, God. In the name of Jesus, say it. In the name of Jesus, I pray amen and amen. Come on, church. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you a free Bible. I want to wrap my arms around you and pray with you and counsel with you. If you need anything, you might be going through a storm right now. You don't know what to do. 
I know someone who knows what to do in a storm. His name is Jesus. So I've got my prayer people standing behind you. They're going to take you to our prayer room, and they're going to give you a free Bible. They're going to pray with if you like. They're going to show. Before they go, yeah, because they're going to miss this announcement. Yeah. Tomorrow night is our partnership class here at seven o'clock. So you're all invited to that. And then we it's kind of like a membership class. Yes, and then also they'll sign you up to get baptized. Water baptized. Baptism here. We Have you been water baptized? You've been so water baptized? No. Yeah. Okay. Water baptized Sunday or Wednesday, right? Okay. Water baptized? You have been? No, no you have been. Okay, you got to come now. Okay, let's sign you. You've been water baptized? You've been, now everybody's gonna say okay. yes now. Yeah. You've, been, you've been water baptized? So they'll talk to you in the room. But come we'll on. Go ahead and release you at this. In time. Jesus' name, just go right this way. Turn right this way.